For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, notice he keeps saying much more, much more, not much less, much more being reconciled, we're saved by His life. You know, I don't know why it is that as Christians, uh, we, we feel so uh, like, like God is just holding us to a, a strict account and one false step and you're a goner. I used to think that myself. One mistake and you're out of here. You know, one false step. I felt like, you know, at times in my Christian life, like I was walking on a tightrope, you know. One false step and I'm gone. I, I hadn't read this yet. Much more, not much less, but much more, you see. If He loved us when we were totally alienated from Him, did, you, did I read this right? Let me read this again in verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled. When we were enemies, we were reconciled. Now, we think of everything in terms of, of what we think of everything in terms of what we do. We do something and get reconciled with God. No, He did something, got us reconciled with Him. And what He did was He sent Jesus to take our place and to carry everything that ever disqualified us. Jesus took all those things and took them away, so that reconciled us to God. So while we were enemies, we were reconciled by the death of His Son. Much more. Now being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement, literally uh, the reconciliation. We have received this reconciliation. Now, in this next part of Romans chapter 5, this concluding part, he makes a long uh, comparison between what Adam did and what Jesus did. So, verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man... Sin entered into the world. Well, who is that one man by whom sin entered into the world? Well, it's, it's by Adam. By Adam's sin in the beginning. By the way, what Paul's getting ready to say here is so unique and so revelatory. You don't find this information anywhere else in the Bible. This is something, it's a revelation of Paul that is presented to us, the fact that, uh, that Adam's sin uh, brought all of us into a condition uh, of alienation from God. He says in verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death, or literally the death sentence, or the condition of death, passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We could say it this way, by one man, Adam, who sinned, he handed down to everyone born of him the, uh, the propensity, or the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, a life that uh, is characterized by sin. He handed that down, we might say, in his DNA, his spiritual DNA, uh, to all that came after him. And then when it says, uh, for that all have sinned, it's like saying uh, we all proved it by the fact that we, maybe we didn't do exactly what Adam did, but we've all sinned. That demonstrates it. Verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Uh, uh, before the law came to Moses, there was still sin going on, but it's not laid to account because there's no law to make it be accounted. Verse 14. Nevertheless, it says, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even over those who didn't sin just like Adam, death still reigned over them, who was a figure of the one that was to come. In other words, uh, Adam created a condition in which death reigned over everybody that was born over him, even if they didn't do the same thing that he did. Verse 15. But, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. The free gift is what Jesus did, by the way. When he says, not as the offense, so also is the free gift, he's making a comparison between Adam and Jesus, but it's a negative comparison in that what Jesus did is like what Adam did, but in, in one way it's not because it's so much greater. You see, he says, um, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if the offense of one, through the offense of one, many be dead, much more. Have you noticed how many times Paul keeps saying much more here? If through the offense of one, many are dead, that is separated from God, much more by the, much more the grace of God and the, the gift of grace, which is by one man Jesus has abounded to many. In other words, if what Adam did had an impact on everybody, what Jesus did has much more of an impact. What Jesus did is so much greater. If we can all understand the fact that what Adam did alienated us from God, we should, what he's saying is we should understand by the same token what Jesus did in a much greater degree brings us right with God. See, Adam had a definite impact on everybody born of him. Now some people would say, well, that's not fair. You know, that's not fair for me to be made a sinner because of what Adam did. But it's, see, it's like this. You were in Adam, yet unborn, when Adam sinned. See, that's the way he's looking at it. Though we were not born yet, the whole human race was in Adam, yet unborn, when he sinned. But likewise, a new race, uh, we were all in Christ, yet unborn again, 
when Jesus made the atonement and made things right with God. That's worth thinking about. Uh, verse 15. Not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For through the offense of one, many be dead, much more. The grace of God. The grace of God is always much greater than everything else uh, to the contrary. And the gift of grace, which is by one man Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Notice he keeps using the language of gift and grace. Free gift. Verse 16. And not, it, not uh, as it was by the one that sinned, so also is the gift. For... The judgment was by one man to condemnation. Please notice that the judgment doesn't say is of many, it says of one man. The judgment came because of one man, and the condemnation came because of one man. But, that's Adam. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. The free gift is after many offenses, and then, then he comes and justifies. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, if by one man's offense death reigned, by one, much more. Listen to this. They which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. He's talking about you and me here. Those who receive the abundance of grace. Abundance means more, means more than is necessary. We have received more grace than is necessary. Even than our, We have an abundance of grace through God. Uh, from God for us. And the gift of righteousness. Righteousness means being in compliance or in right alignment or justified. It's a gift, you'll notice. A free gift. Notice this last part, though. They shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. What do you suppose it could mean to say that those like us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life? Well, does, what does that mean? What does, uh, does it mean when a person reigns? Well, reign is like a ruler. Reign is like the person who, you know, what, what is it that the king who reigns uh, does? Well, he, he decides what's going to happen. He makes choices. Did you know, <laughs> by the way, it doesn't mean that we reign over one another. I don't reign over you, and you don't reign over me. Uh, we reign in our own lives. We reign in life, ultimately the life of Christ. But we, we are put in a position of, of, of calling the shots, of making the decisions. And did you know, by the way, this is both good and bad, you make the decisions in your life. Uh, nobody can make them for you. Even God doesn't make them for you. He leads us and He guides us if we'll follow Him. But do you know, that there are Christians, and I, and I hate to say this, there are people who make bad decisions and bad choices and do some dumb things. I don't want to point any fingers, but I have done some dumb things. Now, it wasn't God, God didn't make me do it. The devil didn't make me do it. You know who did it? <laughs> You know why? Because I am in a condition of making decisions. Because I'm reigning in my own life. Now that, if you think of it that way, you'll think of, you might get the sense of, and I want you to see it as a, as a condition. A, a, you know, God is the ultimate king, and by giving us the position to reign in our lives, He's conveying on us a lot of uh, confidence. He puts a lot of confidence in us, and He's given us a lot of responsibility to, uh, to be in charge of what goes on in our lives and be in charge of the decisions that we make. Now, again, I believe that the Holy Spirit is sent to lead us and to guide us, and the best way to make decisions is to, uh, uh, to seek the guidance and the leadership of the one who knows more and better than we do. But ultimately, uh, we make the decisions for what goes on. We, we make the choices and we make the decisions. On the, on the plus side, on the positive side, that means the devil is not making you do anything. He can't make you do something wrong. You know, I've heard people say, well, the devil made me do it. Remember that comedian? Who was that, uh, Charlie? Remember that years ago, that comedian? You say, the devil made me do it. Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson. <laughs> now, some of, Paul, do you know who Flip Wilson is? I remember the name. Do you really? See, uh, now, uh, we, I, I remember there used to be this television show. Uh, was it Laughing? Was he on Laughing or one of those? Or was he just an independent comedian? Yeah. But he used to say, the devil made me do it. Remember? And that was kind of like, you know, a little phrase and everybody was saying that. That's not true. The devil didn't make you do it. The devil can't make anybody do anything. Uh, he, uh, the devil is in a defeated condition. Uh, Jesus defeated him. And, and if we do something dumb, it's because we chose to do it. That's, that's the downside. If we do something dumb, it's, it's our choice. But see, this is what it means. Uh, those that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ.